Good. So, um, over, over the last few weeks, we've been uh, going through our, our core values as a church. These are the values uh, that bind us together as a group of people here at the Beacon. One church, many beacons, uh, growing disciples of Jesus. So, uh, what are our core values? Who, who remembers? What are our core values? Shout them out for me. Bible saturated. Spirit-filled. Courageous in mission. Spirit filled. Loving people. Loving people. Very good. Brilliant. So, yeah, so that's what we'll be doing. We'll be going over those, um, those values. So, Bible saturated, we've talked about. We believe God speaks to us uh, today through His Word. And we need to immerse ourselves in it and get saturated. Just like uh, in the past, Christy's shown us that example of a sponge that dips into the water and comes up out and is dripping. Uh, the water all cascades out of it. That uh, The word needs to be in our, our hearts and our lives. And if you remember a few weeks ago, Christy said that, uh, that God's word both vaccinates us and is the antidote to sin. So it vaccinates us, it helps us, prevents us from sinning as the Spirit brings that alive in our lives, but also as the antidote to sin when we do sin, because the Bible tells us repeatedly that God, if we come to him and we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he also guides our decision-making, doesn't he? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So Bible-saturated, loving people, someone said, that's, uh, that's right, we seek to embrace and demonstrate God's love to everyone, whoever they might be, and wherever they might be from. And that's what Jesus did, didn't he? He welcomed everybody. He was criticised for being with the sinners and the tax collectors. And you might remember, Ian preached on loving people, and he, he gave us an example of puzzle pieces. That, and he held them up, different shapes and sizes. Um, all complete in themselves, uh, but brought together to live in a community where we love one another, uh, able to do something bigger and more important for God together, working in community, where that love is shared amongst each other. And then last week, we talked about being courageous in mission, and Chrissy brought the word, we aim to be bold and courageous, <coughs> to bring the good news of Jesus, to those who don't know him yet. Just like that woman at the well who went back into the town after meeting Jesus, she went back to the town even though she was shunned by the people who lived there. And she told them, come and see. She invited them, come and see. Come and see the man who told me everything about myself. Could he be the Messiah? And she invited them to come. So this morning, we're on the fourth and final one then, which is spirit dependent. And you might have guessed that from Jeff's worship, which has uh, just been bringing us into God's presence by his spirit. And it strikes me that this is a good value to talk about uh, in the fourth, fourthly, because it kind of underpins all the other values. How can we be Bible saturated without the spirit? It's the spirit that brings the word of God alive to us and gives us fresh insights, isn't it? It's the spirit that brings those scriptures to mind just at the right time when we need them. And how can we love one another without the spirit? It's difficult, isn't it, sometimes to uh, love our friends and our family and uh, we often fail in doing that. But Jesus also taught us or calls us to love our enemies. And what hope have we got of doing that without God's spirit in us, pouring love into our lives and letting that flow out from us? We need God's spirit for that. And as for being courageous in mission, well, we only need to look at the disciples, don't we? Uh, and see how the spirit turned them from a bunch of despondent, um, feeling like they'd failed and let Jesus down and disconsolate group of people into people that spoke boldly about the hope that Jesus brings. And they planted and sowed the seeds for the first church which grew and, uh, and has taken over. We need the spirit in all these things. So spirit dependent then, spirit dependent, 
what does that look like? So, um, you know, I had a look to see what, uh, what does it say in the dictionary about being dependent? And the dictionary says, if you're dependent, it means you're relying on someone or something. You're relying on someone or something, or you are unable to do without. I was just thinking, well, what does that mean in practice? And I, I came up with an illustration from my own life. Um, so uh, many of you will know that I uh, love fishing. I like fishing, it's a place where I go, it's my happy place where I need to get away from everyone else and any other pressures or hassles. And um, quite often I go fishing uh, in the reservoir over at Abbots Bromley, and that's fun. But my, my best place to go fishing is in Poole, in Dorset, where I come from, and uh, go sea fishing, and it's great. And I, a couple of weeks ago, probably about three weeks ago, I booked a trip on a, a fishing boat, going out and going angling, um, with, with a, a chap that I've known for a long time. And uh, I was excited, I got up, ready to go, and off by eight o'clock in the morning down there. And I, I walked up and you have to walk down this sort of long sort of um, alleyway, gallery sort of thing, down to where the boat is uh, come up along the pontoon. And uh, it's a big step up to get into the boat. And you'll know that I'm on crutches and uh, big step ups are not that easy. Um, and I stood on this little step to get over into the boat and there was these blokes said, can we help you coming up? So I'm like, no, I'm all right, I can manage. And I went to step over, and as I uh, have a crutch like this, and as I lifted my crutch like that, it fell off my arm and into the sea. <laughs> plop, 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 plop. And everyone went, just like you did. <gasps> and I thought, oh dear. <laughs> I'm really stuck now. So I'm not in the boat. I'm on the wrong side of the boat, my crutch is in the bottom of the sea, can't get it back, too deep. Um, and I'm thinking like, I'm pretty dependent on this to move around. I'm stuck. Anyway, four big hefty blokes fishing with me. Don't worry Chris, we'll get you in the boat. Off they come, lift me up, a bit like a, a wing and a whatever it is. Uh, and uh, swing me into the boat. And I sit in the corner, just happily, eight hours. Well, except when I need to go to the loo, which was another story in itself. <laughs> um, but you won't need to know that. Um, but I, was, I, I felt like, well, you know, people say, don't they? I feel like I've lost an arm or a leg. I literally felt I'm, I'm completely stuck now. I'm, I'm dependent on these creatures. And, uh, and as we were coming back, we had a good day's fishing, caught a few fish. Um, and we were coming back in and uh, the skipper said to me, Chris, are you going to be all right to get back to your car? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I, I'm not, because I, you know, I can't walk without my crutch. And so anyway, they said, well, don't worry, we'll get you off the boat. And the same thing happened, they swung me over and, uh, and I had one crutch left, so half a, half a able to walk. And uh, people came alongside me, a couple of blokes came alongside me on the other side, and we limped along. And I got to the top, and my car was parked probably a few hundred yards away. And I, I just said to them, Look, I don't think they're going to make it, even with you holding me and helping me. I, I'm tired from climbing up these things. And they said, Don't worry, Chris, we'll go and get our car, pick you up, drop you off, all good. And it, it, and it just struck me as I was preparing this sermon on being spirit dependent, like how dependent I was, how dependent I am on my crutches. When I got back to my uh, house, the house where I grew up in Poole, uh, which we've inherited in this wonderful place, there was a spare pair of crutches that I kept in the garage to go swimming with, because um, it's by the sea. But I got these out and when I got there, and, like I have my joy, I can walk again, I'm free again, I can do what I like. You don't know that feeling. But it reminded me of how dependent I am on them. But also, when I didn't have it, how I was dependent on other people. And, uh, you know, I think there's some key lessons in there. That One, that you've got to accept uh, that you can't do things on your own. And this is important when we come to spirit dependent. We sometimes think we can do stuff on our own. I had to realise, getting off that boat, I wasn't going to be able to get back to my car. I needed help. 
and um, that makes you feel very vulnerable. You know, you have to put a lot of trust in other people when they're swinging you over the sea in and out of the boat. You have to put a lot of trust in people. It's a bit like that with the spirit. We have to put a lot of trust in the spirit as we seek to him to lead and guide us. And we have to ask for help. And I'll unpack this a little bit as well. We have to ask for help. I had to come to that point where I thought, you know, I'm a pretty bullshit person, pretty determined person. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I can do this. I got to the top and I thought, I can't do this. <laughs> you have to recognise that we can't do it. We have to ask for the spirit to come. We have to ask for that extra help to come. So that's that example I want you to keep in your mind as I go through being spirit dependent. And uh, as I thought about it, I thought, well, you know, um, am I like that with the Holy Spirit in my own Christian life? Am I like that with the Holy Spirit? And the answer is no. <laughs> like, I want to be, but I'm not. I'm a work in progress. And I guess there's many of us that are a bit like that. So where, what better place to look is in to follow an example, to have a look at, is the example of Jesus. Because Jesus was dependent on the Spirit, wasn't he? He was completely dependent on the Spirit. And uh, if you've got a Bible, uh, or you've got a phone with a Bible on it, if you want to turn to uh, Luke chapter 4, that would be really helpful. There's just a few verses I want to read from Luke 4. Uh, Chrissy's got some Bibles up there if anyone wants one, just give a wave and a shout. Um, but Luke chapter 4, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. So Luke chapter 4 and verse 1, I'm reading from the NIV UK, and it says this. Um, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. So Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. And many of you that have been coming to church will know the story that, that uh, Jesus in the wilderness is then tested and tempted uh, by the devil to do things that um, uh, the devil wants him to do. And Jesus withstood that uh, by the power of the Spirit and the word of God. He spoke back to the devil the word of God. And if you just, I'm not going to go through all that but because that's a different sermon, but if you can just um, scroll on or look on to uh, verse 13. It says this, verse 13, when the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time, and Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and rolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. So, in these verses, we can see uh, Jesus and his relationship with the Spirit, can't we? So, if we look back at verse 1 again, it says very clearly Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Spirit. If we just uh, skip back one chapter to uh, Luke chapter 3, uh, in verses 21 and 22, it says this. It says, when all the people were being baptised, Jesus was baptised too. As he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit descended upon him. Uh, when we become Christians, 
each of us have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And if you uh, haven't yet made that conscious decision to become a Christian, um, then you can do that. You can do that this morning. You can invite him into your life. Because Jesus will change you. Jesus will live with you. When you invite him in, he comes by his spirit, doesn't he? He comes by his spirit and lives in you, lives in us. And many of us will have done that. And we'll have the Holy Spirit. But are we living day by day full of the Holy Spirit? Are we dependent on that Spirit? In the, um, in the Alpha course that uh, some of you might have done, and I've led on a number of times, uh, Nicky Gumbel likens that having the Holy Spirit to having a, a pilot light on a gas boiler. You've know, got gas boiler, it's a little bit of light all the time, there's a pilot light in there, it's just ticking over. But then when the heating kicks in, or when the hot water kicks in, it goes and that boiler comes fully alive. And that's what we're talking about, being full of the Holy Spirit here. We have the Spirit in us. If you've invited Jesus into your life, you've got the Holy Spirit. But we don't always have it full of, we're not always full of the Holy Spirit. Paul makes it clear in Ephesians 5 verse 18 that this isn't just a one-off experience. He says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's in a continuous past tense, if you like. It says, be being filled. Or keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's something we have to ask for on a regular basis. And Jesus taught his disciples that as well. Um, you don't have to look this one up, but you might want to do it another time. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus was teaching his disciples about prayer and the Holy Spirit. And he, you'll, you, some of you might recall these verses when he says in verse 9, he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. And he goes on to say, which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to good, give, good, give good gifts, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? Will our Father give us the Holy Spirit if we ask him? So we want to be full. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. We want to be, if we're going to be dependent on the Spirit, we want to be full of the Spirit. We want to ask him to fill us with that Spirit. Keep on being filled. Secondly, in verse 1, it talks about, uh, it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the spirit, well, by the, not by the spirit, by the devil, sorry. Being led, for me, and that conjures up a picture, if you like, a, a, a picture of um, a guide dog leading a blind person. That blind person won't be able to see what's ahead of them, but they, um, they won't know where they're going, but they have a trusting relationship with that dog that they will follow. That's right, isn't it? And, difficult for us to imagine if we're not blind. And sometimes the Spirit will lead us. We get to know the Holy Spirit. In John 14, Jesus was again teaching his disciples about the Holy Spirit. And he says to them, these are, this is, you don't, again, you don't particularly need to look this up, in verse 16 and 17, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and will be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him and he lives with you and will be within you. You see, the spirit is a person who's in us. We know him, we can know him. The spirit is a real person. We can know him and have that relationship with him. Hear his prompting, see his guiding, See where he's going to lead us. Galatians 5.25 
keeps us, teaches, encourages us to keep in step with the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. Like uh, walking with a friend, accompanying him as he leads us. And that requires trust, doesn't it? It requires that trust, just like I had to trust in those uh, fishing friends who were leading me, lifted in and out of the boat. And we know that in uh, the first one from Luke 4, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil. Sometimes the Spirit might lead us into a, a difficult situation, one which we might not choose. And here the Spirit has led Jesus into the wilderness, away from people, where he was hungry, it says, didn't he? And tempted by the devil. A potential place of weakness. But Jesus, as I said earlier, used the word of God to refute the devil's temptation. And in verse 14, that verse 14 that we read, it says Jesus returned, after the temptation, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Out of a place of potential weakness, Jesus moved into his ministry in the power of the Spirit. So we need to ask him for the Spirit. We need to accompany the Spirit as he leads us. And thirdly, we need to allow the Spirit to work in us. What does it mean to be in the power of the Spirit? Jesus could only do things he did, only do the things he did through the power of the Spirit. Those verses that we read in Luke 4, 18 to 19. which kind of give a, gives a manifesto of, of Jesus, what Jesus was about. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's uh, favour. There's a whole sermon in there, but it, what, what it means is that Jesus was coming in the power of the Spirit, he was anointed by the Spirit, and he was able to preach the good news, to heal the sick, to bring forgiveness of sin. And he could only do that by the power of the Spirit that was in him. When we were uh, just looking at this in the leadership team the other day at the leadership meeting, we, we noted that that Greek word translated power in verse 14 means uh, either to have a power or to be enabled or to show, to have a, an ability. Maybe an ability in a way that we wouldn't have on our own, in our own strength. So we're enabled to do something or given an ability to do something that we're not able to do ourselves. But we can do it, and Jesus could do it by the power of the Spirit. It doesn't normally uh, happen to me either, these, these sort of things, but um, the other day I was uh, in the hairdressers. I normally go to a hairdresser, I've been going to the same shop. I'm a very man of uh, tradition. I've been going to the same shop for 30 years in Stafford, since I moved to Stafford. It's owned by a lovely lady called Karen. Karen wasn't available. I had to have a bloke cut my hair. Well, it's a long time since I've had a bloke cut my hair. Anyway, he was very nice. And we were the only ones in the shop. He was there. He was talking to me. And um, he said, I see you're disabled. I said, it was not a big uh, thing to notice, is it? Because I, I am. That's pretty obvious. I said, yeah. He said, how long have you been disabled? I explained I've been disabled from birth, blah, 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 blah. He said, you seem very happy and content. I said, well, I am. And it, it's one of those moments when you think, okay, this is God opening up a moment to say something. So I can say, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with what my lot. I thought, I can't just do that, Holy Spirit. I've got to say, well, I am. I've got a wonderful faith, I said. I've got, I also said I've got a wonderful wife and a wonderful family. But I did say that I've got this faith which, which helps me and brings that peace in my life. And he said, that's really interesting. He said, what? And he, and he wanted to know more about it. And as I started talking, it opened up, the conversation opened up. 
And I, I, he said, well, what church do you go to? I said, I go to this Baptist church at the top of Sano Road. He said, a Baptist church? He said, oh. He said, my mum was baptised. I said, wow, was she really? He said, yes, it was amazing. He said, down in Western Superman. I said, did you go? He said, yes. He said, it was like a bit strange. <laughs> she, I said, did she get completely <coughs> baptised under the water? He said, yes. So we started talking about baptism and, and just the conversation opened up into it was the spirit and i'm i'm not normally that bold i don't normally in the hairdressers with my friend carolyn who normally cuts my hair i have to through that friend but um, it's not something i normally do but just i felt the spirit was there and the spirit was opening that opportunity and he said that church sounds like a really great place to go i said it is you ought to come he said i'd like to come and then i found out he lived in Wolverhampton. <laughs> But he might move to Stafford. I said, when you move to Stafford, you come along. He said, I might just do that. So, you know, one day we might have a hairdresser come into the church. <laughs> the Spirit comes and enables us to do things that we don't think we're able to do by the power of the Spirit. So let's summarise then, let's summarise. Jesus, I believe Jesus was Spirit dependent. He was dependent on the Spirit. How can we learn to be dependent on the Spirit. Firstly, Jesus was full of the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, and we need to be also, don't we? What's our response to that? Well, we need to ask for the Holy Spirit. How much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Maybe you need to ask Him, even this morning, as we come to worship again in a bit. I'm going to ask Jeff if he'll do that song, Spirit of the Living God, for a fresh me in a moment. Don't, don't rush yet, Jeff. But that would be another opportunity for us to ask the Spirit to come. Secondly, Jesus was led by the Spirit. And we, we want to be led by the Spirit, don't we? So I thought that I lay. And so not, the first one is to ask for the Spirit and then accompany the Spirit, accompany the Spirit as he leads us, to be open to that prompting, that voice, to trust him. Even if he's going to lead you into the wilderness, he knows what's best. Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit, even though he'd been into a place of uh, potential weakness and temptation. And then the third thing, if we've asked for the Holy Spirit, we've Accompany the Holy Spirit as he's led us. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us and to do those things through abilities uh, or power that's not our own. Things that we're not perhaps normally comfortable with. But by God's power, by his Spirit, we can do all things. Amazing. Just let's, But we've got to allow that. Sometimes we can shut the Holy Spirit off and not take that opportunity, not follow that prompting. We just, um, elsewhere in the Bible it says don't quench the Spirit. And sometimes we quench it, we pour cold water and think, oh, that can't be from God. We don't follow it. So, and, and if we do, sometimes we'll make mistakes, guys, okay? And that's all right. That's part of the learning to be a friend, to develop and live with the Holy Spirit. So there's my three things for you to take away. Three things to take away. Ask for him, accompany him where he leads, and allow him to work through you in the power of the Spirit.